If you own a 1997 to 2004 Jeep Wrangler or Grand Cherokee with a 4.0 and an automatic transmission, then you definitely need to see this video. There are nearly a million of these Jeeps on the road today in North America, and they are known for having some issues on the crank position sensor, not only for higher failure rates, but also some tricky installation steps. So here we'll go over some of the key removal and replacement steps we recommend when replacing this sensor on these Jeeps. The sensor is located on the driver's side of the bell housing. So once you have the vehicle up in the air, just go underneath and right up through there, you can see the sensor just on the driver's side of the bell housing there with the bolt. So the connector is on the passenger side, right behind the front wheel. If you go in and look above the frame, you can see the connector right there. It's a three-wire connector just above the oil pressure sensor. So to take the sensor out, you'll need an 11 millimeter socket and a small extension. And you just sneak it up there onto the bolt and loosen it up. So this is the new sensor, but I wanna show what you have to do to wiggle the sensor out of its location. So as you begin to lift it out of the hole and the bell housing on the transmission, you're gonna to wanna to rotate it like that so that it clears the firewall and then it'll come out. So the new sensor comes with a felt pad on the end and this is to provide proper air gap. So when installing, you push this all the way against the tooth inside the bell housing and tighten the bolt down. And there will be a little bit of squealing when you first do startup and this is just wearing through this to make sure that the air gap's correct. A really important step before you install the new sensor is to make sure that the hole in the bell housing is very clean so that the new sensor seats properly. So just use a towel to clean out any debris or grunk or grime from the hole. And you can even use a little bit of compressed air or an airline to spray out the area to make sure there's nothing in the way for the new sensor. We went ahead and plugged in the new sensor on the passenger side and ran it over here, put it down into the hole. And while pushing down on the sensor, so the felt pads contacting the flywheel, we hand tightened the bolt. And now we just gotta go in and make sure the bolt is tight enough, snug. Now that we have the new sensor installed, all we have to do is Turn the key on and hook up our OBD2 scanner and make sure everything's working properly. All right, now we got it running. We're just gonna do a quick diagnostic check to make sure everything's working properly.